Hey, could put that camera back on me. I want to see how white I am. Oh, you yeah, you're white. You got to adjust the exposure. Yeah, you're, yeah, 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 you're white. Great. This you're, shirt hey. probably doesn't help. You ain't got no. You ain't got no rhythm, white boy. Blending <laughs> into the computer there. That's why I asked you a while ago if you was all right. I feel great. Yeah, you walked around the corner. I said, hmm. <laughs> I said, pale. I, I said, I think that's what Willie was talking about when he said, I didn't look good Sunday. Pale face, boys. I was, well, I mean, hey. Willie made, he tried to make me laugh and he couldn't do it. Oh, but, he, I he mean, looking laugh. back on it, it was funny. Well, welcome there, pale face. Uh-oh, pale face. Welcome, here. pale face. Yeah, I, We're back, baby. <laughs> We're yeah. back, boys. Hey, that's it. We're back. The We're duck up. call room is full staffed again. How did I get so dirty? <laughs> okay. That's all them uh, M and M's you've been eating. I lost my tan. I did get on them M and M's. He did. He he finally just had to push some ways, and I sit here and eat the whole bag. I said, I wonder if these are melting. <clears throat> I looked in there. Yeah, they're melting. But hey, I opened it, so they taste the same. Mm. I'm not eating any more snacks or goodies ever again. Lord have mercy. Well, You're we've been having. Here, here's what we've been doing since y'all been gone. All right. Yeah, I'm curious. I didn't watch. Yeah, uh, well, I yeah, went yeah. through it, and so I didn't really have. Joy had, in my heart, so I never watched yeah, anything. Yeah, we had Al Robertson. Joy, 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 joy. Okay. Yeah, I on, got on the set. Can I can I tell you what what my mom said about that one? Oh, what she said. So my mom was during this whole thing ended up kind of being my caretaker. Her and my wife. My mom was watching the podcast. She said, "Who in the world is that on on the podcast?" <laughs> and I said, I don't know. I mean, I ain't looked at it. I, I said, I think they were supposed to have Al on there. We pull people off. And she said, she said, man, Al's gained a little weight. Uh -oh. <laughs> I said, ooh, okay, all right, mom, mom's spitting that yeah, truth. Yeah, yeah, she ain't, she ain't seen him in a while. Mom, so yeah, mom's spitting yeah. that truth. I yeah. said, well, I think it may be the beard that's got his face looking no, a little. No. No, so I said, so I said, so I no. said no, no, no. Well, maybe was, he should have wore his vest. No, no, yeah, yeah. She was, she was while. right. Al picked up a few pounds. Al picked so. up all the weight I lost in the hospital. Yeah, but I Ooh. thought that was a good one because it. We went back to Al's childhood. Mm. Oh, Al's childhood. Yeah, yeah. yeah there that's, you go. That's well, a winding road. To, there. I guess not to his child. We went back to his teenage years. Okay, mm. that's even more winding. When, mm. well, yeah, when he got in trouble. With the uh, spirits, yeah, okay, right. drinking spirits, okay, oh. not 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 the uh, ghost and all that. Oh, okay. But anyway, and I had told him, I said, "Well, I learned one thing about your friends, there, young man." I said, "You had some good ones." I said, "Because if I looked at your dad, said, hey, you get to the house, and if you boys want to ever show up here again, oh, he yeah. can get his tail tore up." You're going to kill them and get yours, too. No. And I said, and to the man, I said, one of them was just, it was just bad. It was like the song that old Doc uh, sings about wrong place, wrong time. You know, because he, <laughs> right yeah, he got his butt. Yeah, he got his butt. So he said, I don't time. know. He said, I don't know who you are, but you tell your mama that Phil Robinson tore your butt up, yo. Yeah. So uh, it was just. So Phil just whooping everybody uh, in oh, the yeah. neighborhood. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. 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 alcohol was involved and. You know, and the reason Al said the whipping wasn't what really got him, it was what his dad said. He said, you've seen me, what I've put your mama through, and then you're going to pull the same stunt? No. No, that ain't, gonna, that ain't no ride around here, yeah, son. I'll beat it. You know, yeah, 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 that dog will not hunt around here. There you go. Hey. But it was good. Al was here, and we Kay enjoyed. Was, what, and Kay come back in. Kay, yeah. Kay, I was here for Kay. Oh, were you? Yeah. I went yeah. down the next yeah. day. He went down the next mm. day. So you were sitting there with COVID. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Technically. Allegedly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Allegedly. Uh, hey, allegedly is out. I'm buddy. pretty sure the last episode I yeah. was on, I wasn't yeah. feeling a hondo. Yeah. That's and crazy. then the next day I was feeling, you know, 75, then 50. <laughs> Then about 40. Then I spent yeah. a week in the hospital. There you mm. go. And now I'm back. Yeah. Well, quit being so hard. <laughs> and Miss Paula was here. Yeah. So that's, that's good. Right. Yep. Miss Paula was no, here. No, that was a good one. Paula? Yeah. That I ain't got to listen to well, it. Well, look, here's yeah, what it was I so, It was so nice to look at something that was pretty. Boy, ain't it? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. What, a, what about now? <laughs> well, hey, there you not, go. Not we're, so much. Hey, we're back to the ugly. <laughs> oh, okay? here we go. Hey, just because I lost a little color doesn't mean I'm ugly. Uh. I, you never have looked very good, Jack. <laughs> and look, I'm looking in. I'll look in the mirror in the morning too. Okay. So uh. This is not. This is not a good. I forgot group, you boys. trimmed up. Too. I will. I will say, God, when your woman 
checked on me as much, if not more, than anybody throughout the whole process. So. Oh, Mr. I know. I was so. getting information from her. I yeah. said, you talked to Martin today? Yeah. Well, I was asking about both of you. Okay. Oh, I believe you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Miss Pa, the first time oh. I went to the emergency room, I was just sitting there by myself, freaking out. Yep. And then Miss Paula just comes through from a random door, and I was like, yeah. "Thank she you, God." She knows all them she bad about and I was like, well, "How? Why are you here?" She was helping a friend, and she said, "Do you need anything?" I said, "I, I need a water. I'm, I'm straight." And she <laughs> I'm, I'm showed parched. up with a bottle of water. <laughs> dusty, dusty boy. Then they sent me home that day, and then I went back to the emergency room the next day and checked in for five days. But <laughs> Miss Paula was key <laughs> practice room. key day one to to getting me through day one for sure. Or whatever day that was. What yeah. day is it? Ah, uh, Monday. Is it? I don't know. I'm like, I'm like JD. I never can't keep. Up it's a week. Days. I'll tell you this: it's one week from when your boy here crashed and burned. Yeah. So <laughs> it is one he, week. He means that one literally. Week. Yeah, he means that so, literally. Okay. I mean, are we going to tell the stories? Well, I mean, we can. I guess I. I, I don't. Well, know. here's the deal. Hey, I can tell the short version of it. Yeah, you passed uh, out twice, didn't you? I did. I passed out so. Yeah. I was diagnosed with COVID two Mondays ago, right? Yeah, two Mondays ago is when I had my positive test. I, I technically had it Saturday, like the 24th of July, something like that. But so last Monday, I was due to rejoin society. I had done my quarantine, done my isolation, hadn't had fever. No problem. I mean, like, I, I obviously had a little bit of problem, but nothing major. But like, you think go back to work. Oh, yeah. I was, he was look, I had, I had done everything that week, like, in the isolation. Like, I mean, I power washed my dadgum patio. I, I, didn't I mowed my yard. Like, I shot yeah. my bow. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I was doing all kinds of stuff. He thought and, he was feeling good. Mm -hmm. And then Monday morning happened. So Monday morning, the first time in the whole process, I got fever. I got the chills, and I'm like, "Now hold on, now." I, yeah, I thought, yeah, I this thought, is ridiculous. I thought we was done. Yeah. So after I got done with the chills, that was like seven thirty in the morning. After I got done with the chills, I was like, "You know how you feel after that? You feel kind of clammy and just like mm -hmm. nasty." Yep. So I was like, "Well, I'm gonna get a shower." So I went in there, turned on the shower, was letting the water get hot, and uh, walked in the kitchen to get me something to drink. And on my way back to the shower, the lights went out. That was about seven? About 7.30. 7.30, 7.45, somewhere around there. But the lights went out, like gone. I, I remember getting lightheaded, and I remember like having time to like put my arms out. And then I woke up in a puddle on the floor, <laughs> and there was a shattered mirror beside me. Brittany's freestanding mirror in our bedroom. Well, he gone. Well, hey, if I'm you want to, if you want to know what he looks like, he's standing outside the dumpster at the L and M building. Um, <laughs> he down well, around. I, I just know this: you tripped in the duck blind one day, <laughs> okay? And he's like, he's like a the big whole giant front end yeah. fell out. Hey, from under. This, it, this man is like a giant oak tree. Oh, I can when clear he a falls, mm -hmm. something is fixing to bust. Yeah, okay? busting. He I tore the whole front end of the blind out when he went down. Okay, I can, and that's the same thing happened when he passed out. It's a big I clear a path now. <laughs> yeah. So I wake up, and my dog's just looking at me. <laughs> I know my dog's thinking, what in the world just yeah. happened? Because yeah. she was well, up in. down here. Why didn't you yeah. pet me? Well, no, she was up on the bed. She, she hadn't got out of bed yet. She's still laying on yeah, the she's bed. She's watching and the whole she's, thing. She, down, she come down there to the edge of the bed and just looking at me. Yeah. Like, you all right? Hold it down. You, you Hold good? it down. That's you good, Hammer? <laughs> and so I get up, and I got enough sense about me. I get on the phone, mm -hmm. and I call my doctor, and I get about three words with him gone lights go out again and i am in that doctor's office getting checked out because at this point i have pneumonia and i can't breathe and the doctor's looking at me like you might need to go to the hospital <laughs> then his phone rings he goes hold on he goes and he gets on the phone and his face goes scary and i'm like oh no something's happening and he goes where does justin martin live and i'm like not martin i go i know where he lives and he was like where's he at i said i guess at his house he goes, he just passed out. And then he looked at me and goes, go to the hospital. And I was like, what is happening? Was you standing up again? Yeah. Uh-huh. 
Yeah. I went to get my phone so I could call him. Yeah. yeah. And be like, what do yeah. I need to do? Well, then yeah. you call yeah. me. Well, and then lights out. So I wake up this time to him yelling on the phone. <laughs> Oh yeah, in my ear, like yeah. I somehow. He's so trying you, to you know, when you yeah. fail, it just right there. It, it stayed you. right there beside yeah. my head, and I fell this time like halfway into our kitchen little area and the bedroom. So like half tile, half carpet, and and this fall I put a hole, a pretty fair sized hole in our wall. Uh, apparently, I whenever I fell, I hit the door, oh, which tore the door stop off. That's how hard I hit. And the door handle went into the wall with a fair amount of force. Yeah. <laughs> it's all, uh, probably about 260 pounds times negative 9.8 meters per second squared. He was I moving, boys. I don't think there was a lot of uh, resistance on my fall. I think it was full gravity. Uh, yeah. um, Them neighbors are thinking, what are they doing? Yeah, they, why, they awful yeah. They're fighting a lot over there. But. You're, you're like kids when you're holding them and yeah. they go to sleep. Yeah. When you're holding them and they're awake, they're not that heavy. Once they pass out, gone. Oh yeah. no, it's yeah, golly, yeah. dead weight. Yeah. yeah. Then he called me and told yeah. me the whole story. Yeah. I said, "Well, where are you at now?" He said, "Well, I'm outside. I'm on the grass in case I fall. <laughs> I won't hurt nothing." Yeah, I had to get a I'm ride. Just, hey, I'm tearing up the house. I got out of the house. Boy. Yeah, I had to get a ride. Oh. So I was waiting on yeah. my mom come get me, get me to the to the doctor. And I said, "You know what? I probably ought to go get in the grass." case this happens again at least yeah get off that yeah. get off the concrete get off get the out glass of, mirrors yeah get away from anything that can hurt me if i pass out here i'm in the yard somebody come somebody will see me and come get me like, well one thing you know, good about it, boys i'm glad you're back and healthy yeah. both, amen both of you amen okay because hey so i i would like over it is nothing to play with no people. he ain't he don't play fair okay. he's he's playing chess while we're all playing checkers yep. <sighs> And uh, mm. but I would like to, uh, on my end, extend a large amount of gratitude to the fine people at uh, at Sanson's Family Medicine and also at at the Reeves Memorial Medical Center in Bernice, Louisiana, who who took, took great care, care of you. me yeah. um, and did it with a smile on their face and were when I was at my worst. They were at their best. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, they are the unsung heroes, all the nurses oh, yeah. and doctors mm. that put up with this thing on a daily basis. Amen. Really I got a whole list of nurses that yeah. I need to do. I was in, so I was in the hospital, which oh, we ain't got, well, you got to take a break. Yeah, I'll right. fix that. I was in the hospital for five days, so I got a lot of nurses to thank. <laughs> Jenny, my girl at snack time at night, you, you're the best still. <laughs> if you're so, listening. Hey, we'll be right back. Snack time. After this, after this. I didn't know there was a snack time in the hospital. It hmm. nearly killed me. Oh, Lord. <laughs> All right, we'll be snack back. Snack time got him, boys. Look, summer is winding down and so is its carefree nature. Ease back into reality by seeing how much you could save on home and auto insurance. Like we all as adults have like our own back to school list, right? You get haircuts, organize your office, find a better deal on your home and auto insurance. Policy Genius can for sure help you with the next with the last one. Look, it's never a bad time to find ways to bundle your home and auto insurance and save on coverage with Policy Genius. Are your home and auto policies almost up for renewal? Let Policy Genius look for a lower rate for you. Why would you want to use Policy Genius? It's easy. It makes it easy to compare home and auto insurance in one place. They can help you find home and auto coverage similar to what you have now, but at a lower price. We're talking about saving money, folks. Look, they've saved customers an average of $1,250 per year over what they were paying for home and auto insurance. They've saved new customers an average of $435 per year just on auto, and they save new customers an average of $350 per year on home insurance. Their team will handle all the paperwork to set up your new policy or switch over to your from your current one. So getting started is easy. First, head to policygenius.com slash sci and answer a few quick questions about yourself and your property. Then Policy Genius takes it from there. They'll compare rates from America's top insurers from Progressive to Allstate, to find the lowest quotes available. The Policy Genius team can look for ways to save you more, including bundling your home and auto policies. If they find a better rate than what you're paying now, they'll switch you over for free. Their top-notch free. service has earned Policy Genius thousands of five-star reviews across Trustpilot and Google. Head to policygenius.com slash to get started now. Policy Genius, when it comes to insurance, it's nice to get it right. Slash 
But them people, them them folks, frontline workers dealing with this crap. Oh my goodness. My hat's off to you. Um, there's no mm-hmm. way that we as a society are giving you near enough credit for what you're doing right yep. now. Mm-hmm. And uh, just just so you know, know we all thank you and appreciate you. I, so. From from the little experience I've had in a hospital room, I so my son's been through a lot of stuff. That's a whole nother podcast and a long story. But I, I've spent a lot of time as somebody in a hospital room, but not the patient. Mm-hmm. And then last week, Monday through Friday, I was patient. <laughs> I was in a hospital room, didn't see a hallway. And, and for them to go through that every day, yeah, seeing different people coming in there. And, and you know, the, they called me one of the good ones by Thursday. They liked coming in my room because I'm joking, I'm laughing, I'm feeling better. But, like, coming in my room on Monday, that had to be a miserable experience because I was – I was in a bad spot, as, yeah. as you could call it. Preach. Yeah, they wrapped yeah. me up in warm towels up there. I was freezing to death. You they, got warm towels? Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you now. Masson. Jenny, I didn't get any warm Bar- towels. Bernice, you got snacks. Though. Bernice got, got it snacks. going on. <laughs> no, I will say, that snack bag. So, that, so what's in a snack bag? Here's my problem bread. with the hospital. Broccoli. Right? We appreciate you. Carrots. Now I'm going to Now I'm gonna <laughs> tell you going the things. Now negative on them. Now I'm going negative on your food. Um... So they feed you at 8, 12, and 5, but I'm hungry. If I eat dinner at 5, I'm a big boy. Come 9, 30. Now, they told me I need to lose weight. So, by the way, thanks for the M&Ms uh, yeah. and the Airheads. I ain't eating any more of them. Uh, right. We're on, I'm on Stone's fitness plan. But about, you know, 8 or 9, I'm starving. Well, night 2 or 3, it's all one big conglomerate now in my head. My my new nurse's aide comes in, Jenny. And she was like, hey, do you want your snack bag? And I said, Jenny, Jenny, don't play with me. <laughs> I said, is there a snack bag? Do not bag? torture me. And she comes in. She's like, oh, yeah, you get a snack bag every night. She showed back up the next night. I was like, Jenny, where's that snack bag at? She brought three of them. It was just like graham crackers and peanut butter. But right. hey. at once you eat dinner at five, graham you're hungry. Graham crackers and peanut butter. Like, mm-hmm. what is this, a cruise ship? <laughs> and so they I'm give in. They give you that so you uh, can't talk to them. Boy. Yeah. They, oh, and, they give you them slobber, and no water. They, they hey, give you them slobber stoppers, so they yeah. ain't got to hear from you in a minute. Oh, they do, because yeah, they don't want to come in your room because yeah. you got COVID. Yeah. So they're like, "Hey, you doing all right?" I'm like, "Yeah, I'm okay." Long, yeah, long distance. Can you yeah. come change the channel? Mm. <laughs> I watched a lot of TV. That was boring. Yeah. Without fast forwarding commercials. That's that's tough. Mm. Man. I'm still scared. I I got I got some stress to work through. I need to go see somebody. You got some PTSD and to talk work to through. them about what I went through last yeah. week. But no, I'm I'm feeling great. Uh, breathing good. Going on walks every morning, every evening. That's feeling good. solid. I, right. I ain't quite back to normal. I can tell I lose my breath every once in a while. But yeah. Cy still got his oxygen. That's it. They didn't give me oxygen. So right. if I go down, just hook that thing up to me. <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna put to, some sanitizer. We'll call, them, we'll call the ambulance. Sasa, so Sasa, so we're gonna have to get you on too. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. Get you we, on. This is this is an oxygen machine with two straws. But what is funny? <laughs> me and Sai basically went through the exact same thing. Yeah, y'all did the same treatment. A week mm-hmm. of COVID, mm-hmm. then double pneumonia, and then the same five day treatment in the hospital. See, I didn't even know I had pneumonia. Nobody yeah. told you? No, no. Because I never did have the chills and everything. Mm-hmm. I had to. You know, I just went to the hospital and they said, "Yep, you got it." They done the test. They said, "Yeah, you got it." <clears throat> they put me in there and said, "Okay." The doctor come in and said, "Okay, we're gonna put you on a five day what we call the five day plan." Mm-hmm. You know, and the first thing they did was hook the IV to me. Yeah. And I, you know, they would come in and say, oh, "How you doing?" And I said, "I feel great." You know, and then I went to see Doctor Hamlet after, after you know a month after it. And he said, uh, "Some somebody said something." And I said, "Well, I didn't have I didn't have pneumonia." He said, "Yeah, you did." Yeah. And I <laughs> said, "What?" You didn't I said, know what I didn't you have had. no chills, none of that. And he said, "Well, you had pneumonia. Trust yeah. me, it's on your chart." Yeah. I I so, felt hey, you know, I figured if I had pneumonia, I'd have been cold and say, "Hey, give me some blanket." Yeah, pretty much what I figured out, what I I discovered during this whole thing, is if you get COVID, you get pneumonia. You get pneumonia. Everybody's point. degree of it is very different. different. Yeah. Yeah. Because I have it. I guess I still have it. Um, I'm still on antibiotics. But it was extremely light and spotty. So he was like, You're good. 
just keep breathing deep breaths get up move and it'll kill itself out um move that's I'm, where i'm at now yeah after so, a week of of pneumonia that's I'm why now. this thing's so bad though it hits people differently yeah that's well, and that's what happened to me so you know, the what got me to my spot we think is i just drank water the whole time i love water if, water you, if drinker, y'all know boys. me if you know me, you know I drink more water. The one water thing than, we were not afraid of with Martin was yeah, dehydration. Because, I was like, he's fine with that. But what I did is I, I forgot my basic biology training. Overhydration. And knowing that water has to follow sodium into a cell. It's just the way it gets there. Well, I didn't have any sodium because I was barely eating. I mean, I thought I was eating enough, but I was not eating I mean, looking back on it, I was not eating anything. I mean, I ate like. How much weight did you lose? Yeah, I lost like fourteen pounds. Yeah. And, uh, wow. I was talking to him one oh, night, yeah. and he says, "Boy, oh, there's some ice cream in the freezer, but I just don't want to burn it." <laughs> I was scared it wasn't <laughs> going to taste good. Good taste it. <laughs> yeah, I was scared, man. I didn't you needed wanna... that ice cream. Oh, I ate it. <laughs> oh, good. I ended up eating it, but, um, but yeah. So what I did was got my body depleted of all electrolytes. Like, no sodium, no potassium, no magnesium, nothing. Because I was drinking, like, 10 bottles of water a day and two Powerades. That's it. When I should have been drinking 10 Powerades and two bottles of water. And I'd have probably never got in the situation I got into had I done that. But, I mean, you think hydration, drink water, yeah, you'll be yeah, fine, yeah. you know. And and I was not fine. I think- I, and But when I did that, it allowed weakness in my body and the virus took one more swing at me like all right buddy we, we got one more shot at you now that you down and it took that shot and then i gave it a shot right back or the the medical professionals did and then after i had that infusion man about eight hours after that i think i've been most, getting better ever since so the and, part with you was passing out yeah i mean the good lord he ain't yeah. done with me yet because yeah. otherwise gone. i should have I should have hit my head on something. That glass from that mirror should have cut me to pieces. And I somebody would have should have found me dead in my bedroom from bleeding out on something. Ooh, yeah. You know. Yeah. And that that would have that's and all I have is this tiny scratch on my elbow. Yeah. So he, he took me and just said, Whoop, laid me down right where I could right where I could be laid down. So Ed. you know. I, I, I'd like to just make the one point before we go on to like fun stuff, which yeah. I would love to do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I think the most important thing is be proactive mm-hmm. and talk to people smarter than you. Yeah. Cause I, I, where I think I got messed up, I went and got tested. I'm 32 years old, never been sick in my life. I'll be fine. G- give me them vitamins people are talking about. We'll be all right. Well, about seven days later and lost 12 pounds and had 102 fever couldn't shake it that's when the pneumonia hit me then two days after that get your butt to the hospital i i i didn't have the twist and turns martin had i just got beat down for two weeks yeah mine was pretty much just a pretty level and then somebody pulled the rug out from under me yeah and then we got lifted back up it was just like i said it was craziest thing it was no problem until there was a problem mine was was, like slow build it just went (laughs) Mine was beat you down till you are nothing, and then we will get you in the hospital and build you back up. And I feel great now. Yeah. Um, but I, I do think it's important for everybody to to know, like, go get treatment. It ain't. It ain't. I. The. I'm the, just gonna be honest. Thirty two years old. I was like, I'll be fine. I've had friends that had it. No symptoms. Nothing. This ain't gonna be a big deal. Well, that night three of that hospital visit when I've been alone and hadn't seen a hallway. For, for three days, I was thinking differently. Yeah. So whatever you do, take care of yourself 100% and don't just assume anything. Amen. That's, there's my medical advice from a guy who filled out half the application to nursing school. For all of y'all that are listening to this that have reached out during this process, thank you guys for, um, sure. for checking on us and all of that. We do appreciate you. If you are new here, make sure... You hit that subscribe button, youtube.com slash duck call room, all one word. And Goblin, what are we going to do? Bring that bell. Guaranteed bring that bell. And if you're listening on Apple Podcast or anywhere else you listen to, make sure you leave us a review. We'll be back right after this. So many places. Take a break. Back. 
by 35 years. Years of research and development, boy. And it's Guess working what? for... It's working for you personally. And it comes from the pristine waters of New Zealand, boys. Oh. That's why it works. Thank you. I love it. I Look, <laughs> I, legit, that up, did you? <laughs> I legit, during this whole time, missed reading Omega X. <laughs> I legit missed Hey, it. look, it's exciting. It this is. This is not like all the other ones, okay, that it covered up in like a cream and all that. Hey, it actually goes to the source of the problem. Information, boys. We're there getting rid of it. it. Is. Whether it's Hit back, it, Martin. Whether it's back, knees, neck, or shoulder pain, the underlying cause is likely inflammation. <laughs> you have to defeat the inflammation or it can cause permanent damage. Back by 35 years, Omega XL attacks the inflammation that is causing the pain. Pain relievers and topical rubs just mask the problem. Omega XL neutralizes the inflammation Neutral. that causes painful stiff joints and muscles. Look. It's good enough for all of us. It's, I promise you, it'll be good enough for you. If you're suffering with aches and pains, you need to try Omega XL now. Let's help get you started. Order Omega XL now and get a second bottle for free. Visit OmegaXL.com slash duck. That's OmegaXL.com slash duck. Or call 1-800-844-4888. 800 <laughs> 800-844-4888. 800. And it's free. You get two bottles. The first one you pay for, the second one is free. Thank I you. I guarantee you. The last Man. time, 800-844-4888. So since, you, since you boys ain't been in quarantine slash isolation. Tell us what's yeah. been happening. What the heck's going on in the world? <laughs> Me and Stone and BK and Hunter headed north. Headed across north. the state line, boys. And when we crossed the state line, we went to Searcy, Arkansas. Searcy, wow. Arkansas. I've spent a little time And then we there. went to a little town called Pangburn. Pangburn. Population 601. Okay. And we went to the Little <laughs> Red little red River. Like okay. That. This water is about... Uh, it's close to that color right there yeah. on that package. It's hot. It's kind of... It is not... You bald faced liar. <laughs> Look, it'll be 100 degrees up on top of the cliff. Mm. When you go down to the boat ramp to launch your boat, it's about a cool 70. And that smoke on, on the water. Yeah, smoke. on the river. Not smoke, it's fog Come from on. the cold. I was thinking of this. Hey, this, the water in that river is what? a cool 47 degrees all year round and look did you get in it oh did no i just stuck my hand in it i said oh that's nice but it'd be actually cold <laughs> they had clowns I they was hey, they had people in fishing it. okay that's fishing waiting oh and yeah there were no waiters okay overall oh that feels great oh no it was i said i said is it cold and they said oh no it feels wonderful wade fishing <laughs> is one of the greatest oh, things yeah. a human being can do no i stick I in a boat Here's what I tell you. We did that trip with our wives mm -hmm. probably, what, five, six years ago now? It's been a minute. And uh, You're still here. And I got another. I got another. <laughs> I got another. But look, the women beat us. And part of the deal was if you lost, you had to jump in the river. That's mm -hmm. cold. Well, we, yeah, all, didn't, we've, we didn't make that rule in our boat. We have discussed at length what happens to Johnny Galvin when cold water oh, hits yeah. him. Yeah, he don't, hey, so, Johnny Colvin don't like ice. Yeah. He, he, any time. Johnny Cold. Uh, right, Johnny Cold, boys. But any, so Galvin didn't cash in on the bet, nope. but I did. I told the, you I would. For the whole crew. Well, you and made it a was bet like, and you just backed out of it? It was like when the water was rolling, so it was as cold as it was going to be oh, coming uh, out of that dam. Yeah. Offensive. And I went in there, and buddy. Hey, if you stand there too long, it'll probably give you pneumonia. I don't know. It was, they was, hey, it, I, it was a you lot. You don't want pneumonia. Lots hey, of groaning going on. Hold on. I and a lot of getting out of the water and just tightening yeah. up. Yeah. And where's the towel? Yeah. I, I, yeah, couldn't I, get out of, I couldn't get out of that water fast enough. But here's the good thing, I folks. put my feet in it. <laughs> this is one of them deals, okay? You're not going fishing. What okay, you, you're what? going throw... Your little jig out there with a cork on it, and then the, the, the current the current pulls it around in the, in the eddy, okay, and you pop it, and once you do, the cork's going to go under, and you really mean. That's right. Look, and then you do that, depending on how long you want to stay and do it, okay, 
for the next two hours and catch yeah. you a couple of hundred trout. That's right. Exactly is that easy? Right. It it's is. It's that it, easy. I'm selling it. Look, the Jeff first time crew, I went, yeah. they, oh, they hey. know that river so well, it is that easy. Jeff, yep. can, I'll tell you, here's the way it went. As soon as we pulled up there. You know, we're watching them splash. I'm sitting there standing there as he's launching the boat. He's out there about 15 yards, splash, 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 splash. And Jeff said, we're going to fish right here. That's good call. <laughs> and he said, BK, just throw it right over there. Well, BK was just dropping it off the back of the boat. Go. I mean, as soon as she had dropped it off the back, it was choom. And I'm talking about, hey, there was about, oh, 12 inches. Every mm-hmm. one of hers. What? She caught the big ones. I throw out there. Six to eight inches. What? BK dropped Trout? it off the end of the boat. Boom. Oh, yeah. All rainbows, probably. Rainbows? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I actually did catch one, though. The next morning, we went, and he gave me a jig. You finally caught one? Caught, oh, no. We was going for big ones. Oh. Okay, so I got a jig, and I'm throwing it and letting it fall and jerking it. Letting oh, it fall yeah. jerk. And I caught four or five rainbows, and Jeff was just shocked that I caught the rainbows because we was actually going after the big brown. Yeah. The big old brown. Okay, but I didn't catch any brown. But well, I did finally catch one brown. He was about 10 inches long. I want to go pretty fly though. fishing there. The browns are pretty. No, you don't. Oh, you, you want to do this. No, you want to take no. out. You want to take I out. I love fly fishing. Look, when but, you're fly fishing, whoever's over there with the cork and the little jig. Oh, they're whooping. He's yeah. going to catch 50 mm. to your one. Yeah, that's okay? exactly right. Yeah. Trust plus, me when I tell plus you. Jeff, about that trout magnet. Yeah. Them, plus, them rainbow trout love it. Jeff don't own no fly company. He owns a trout magnet. Uh-oh, right. old that's trout right. magnet. That's right. And he had said, I said, well, no, I said, uh, how are the trout magnets, y'all? And he said, well, they're really better than the crappie. Mm-hmm. And I said, say what? <laughs> Don't tell them. He that. said, oh, I'm telling you, it's better than the crappie uh, magnet. And I said, you got it. And then it was like, baby hey, cat. Well, that trout magnet's the OG. Boom. Yeah, Boom. That was his first bait design or whatever. Oh, hey. that, oh, that, that sucker catches them, man. Hey. Oh, what are you talking about? Yeah, that's fun. Did y'all eat any of them? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah they, the next morning... We fished the river for big fish, okay? And then we told them, okay, boys, it's time to call it a, a day. Okay, Let's go buddy. have breakfast. And he was up there on the bank, you know, with his little setup rig. And we had taco, mm. you know, fish tacos. Oh, y'all had fish tacos. Eggs, uh, Man, whatever. I, I bet that tasted oh, good. Oh, no, no. It was a spread, okay? I said, yeah, okay. I got pictures of what I was eating during the time. You don't, uh, it wasn't yeah. as good. Well, it wasn't as good. Yeah. I tell you. Uh, I, I tell you well, right there's now. nothing better than catching fish, filleting them, and then frying them right there on the river. Oh, right. oh preach, buddy. It's something about, it's just, they're better. Great preaching. I, I believe yeah. it's called freshness. Yeah, yeah. Freshness. I, It may be, but it's just fine as frog hair. I'm ready to get back on the pond. I ain't been no. on the pond. and Well, I tell you that when I did, that was the last thing I did before I got sick. I thought I'd going to call somebody to come get me from the river. I was like, well, me and BK was going through withdrawals because we hadn't been fishing because it's been too hot. Yeah. Well, hey, we took care of that up there on, it the, has been on hot. the red little red river. That's good. Okay. It, and hey, it was bad as having a little red wagon <laughs> and running around the neighborhood in it. Hey, little that, little red, red wagon. wagon. Yeah. Hey, what? so we was on Little Red River uh, and it was just every cast. Here comes a little old yeah. rain. How many track. times did you say? Oh, I hate it when I'm right. No, well, no, I, I just said, so. I said, this is ridiculous. I said, but it's one thing good about it. I said, it's, it's ridiculous fun. I, I, I said, because trick. every time you throw it out there, pop it, the cork goes under, and here you go. I know. Defective, <laughs> defective corks, they keep sinking. Hey, they keep sinking, boy. <laughs> hey, there it is. Was it a cork or a bobber? It was a cork. Or a float. It was a cork, dummy. <laughs> you big, no such thing as a bobber. I've missed you, you calling me you dummy. Big dummy. <laughs> you big dummy. You big dummy. I've needed somebody to call me a dummy. I love it. Well, that's good. I'm glad people's right. been thriving while, while oh, yeah. we was locked oh, up. Oh, yeah, like The world like didn't stand still for y'all. It kept moving. Good. That's good Dawn has been busy, okay, on oh. the land. Well, I noticed. I, I have been at work the last, I was here Friday for a minute. And here today, and and I ain't seen Stone yet, so well, I no, figured no. he was Stone oh, no. been texting He's me. He's been on the land, him and Dan, and they've been running around in the whole summer and planting rice and jap millet in the muck. Good, okay, because the river's been up this year forever. It's yeah. finally, you know, got down pretty good. Okay, where they could do a little bit of it, and it's about two inches of water. <clears throat> then they had okay, we got to get it dry. 
for to let it come up mm -hmm. the, since they're planting rice. Well, they had a problem. Oh, the yeah. rivers silted in. Okay, so now the river is actually higher than Fields Fields Lake, so it don't drain. Oh, cut off it. Oh yeah, yeah, it's higher. Okay, so Field had to get say, a well, out. we well, I've got to get this water off there, so he pumped the Congo uh, uh, back the Congo pump down on the dump. And, and lift pumped it, it out. Yeah. He closed the gate, pumped it out that way to, so the rice could come up. Then when it gets about eight inches high, he'll pump it back up, boys, and then we'll get ready for duck season. Yeah, I've got good. a problem So now. Stone's been working Fight. his tail off. We scaring duck season. Oh, no. Yeah. And hey, we look, a month from teal season. And we done, and still and we done had is. reports from the boys down south that we go hunting with them in the marsh. They're loaded. Hey, good. Already? Yeah. Oh yeah, they're loaded. Is that a good thing? That's a good thing. What if they for them? Uh, oh no, that's good for them. Oh, it ain't no, worth a good. rip for oh, us. No, it's good for us because me and Stone get in a pickup <laughs> truck and head south. Hey, boy, this guy, uh, he he can afford a tank of gas. Yeah. It's all right for him. <laughs> right, right. Uh, all right. Well, let's Ooh. take a break. We'll be back right after this. Brought to you by the right Duck after this, boy. What you really need to know is that the average American has 97 points they could add to their credit score. All right, that's it, boys. But most of them have no idea on just how to get it. The data Tell us si how. The data scientist at Scoremaster cracked the code on how. It. Adding 97 points to your credit score is like found money. And that who, is. Who doesn't like oh, finding hey, money? I, like I pick up a money. penny. That's, that's what it, I'm talking boy. about. And one of my greatest joys is opening the dryer and there being a $5 bill laying in you there. You got $5 like, bills in your dryer? Well, sometimes I forget I put it in a pocket. I need so. to do your laundry. So it means fast loan approvals, huge discounts, low interest rates on everything from buying or refinancing a home, leasing a new car, or to applying for a credit card. How fast is ScoreMaster? One member raised his credit score 33 points in just five days, another 43 points in just a couple of weeks. ScoreMaster is so easy, it takes about a minute to get started. And if you hurry, you get to try ScoreMaster for free. That's right. Try ScoreMaster free and see how many plus points you can add to your credit score. Go to scoremaster.com slash duck. That's scoremaster.com slash duck. And one last time, scoremaster.com slash duck, boys. There it is. Free money. Go find that money. And it's it. find free. the money, boys. All right, what do y'all want to talk about? Do we have any? I guess we want. What did we finish in the Olympics? Oh, I can talk about the Olympics, oh, son. Hey. I have had nothing but time to oh, talk oh, hey, somebody, and watch the Olympics. Who was uh, Lewis that had the record? For uh, you mean Allison Felix has the record? Thank you at well, eleven. Well, I'll because she won the four by four hundred hey, last. I'll fix that. He had now. ten. She's got eleven now. She's got eleven. She went to five Olympics, and this one was so impressive because she had a baby. Can you imagine? First off, and no. she's thirty-five years old. I think she's older than that. No, no. I just hey, trust me. She's thirty-five. All right, hey. So, so am I, I watched and I watched huh? all the so am I. stuff. So are you? Yeah, but I ain't in no Olympics. I was fixed. Hey, I was just fixed. Hey, yeah, I'm impressed. Thirty-five. Oh, she is thirty-five. Look at you. Hey, I seen look, a. I seen an event this. that I could compete in. What uh, was that? Uh oh. Sandwich Walk racing. Rolling. The what? The power walking? Walk racing. Walk racing? Yeah, I've been in that Oh, I thought it would be rolling group. over. I get in that arm slinging group, but I don't hey. do my hips like they do. You got to do the Boy, hips. they get up there. They, they got it oh, going They had the wall? I didn't see that one. Oh, oh, yeah. I did because, man, they needed to work on their camera angle on that really. <laughs> there was a lot of... Them boys wasn't wearing Tommy John. Oh, boy. Let's just... Let's just uh, let's just yeah. leave it at that. All right, let's move on. All right. I not, that, just, I don't say, need to go no further, boys. Yeah. Just know I they said, weren't wearing it, Tommy. John. I said right. good That's night. It. That's right. I, said, I no could pouches. probably do that, but I said, Paula, come here, come here. She said, What are they doing? And I said, They're walking fast, walk racing. They power said, walking. Oh my gosh! Hey, I still, power walking. I, I stand by this statement. I think the most impressive thing in those Olympics to me is that synchronized swimming. How what? in the world do them people stay afloat by moving their hand two inches? I know. It. Underneath that water. Like, I ain't ever seen that. And they all do it at the same time. That crap is impressive. Like, Synchronized swimming? Yes. It's like eight of them. them. They, they ain't standing on the bottom. But, so, so, but did you on. see, because I watched 
They don't. And an inordinate amount of TV over the last yeah. five days. I watched a lot in of isolation. Um, did you see the the women's water polo team? They have a goalie named Ashley Johnson. Did you ever see her? I, I didn't watch. She the would be water in polo. in the water, and then she wouldn't be in the water anymore. And then be back in the go. Yeah, she she, she would just actually walk on water. She would just yeah. and just walk on water. Go up. Yeah. And I'm like, how do you, how do you, how do you do that? That gave like, that, that like gave an extra person pack. on offense. Oh yeah, it was the most like when she would go to like make a save, <laughs> which I don't really understand water polo. Not going to claim to, but when she would go to make a save, she'd be like shoulders in the water, and then her hips would be out of the water. Yeah, like a dolphin. It was yeah, the most no, incredible no, thing. No, yeah, I watched that for hours, and I was just like, "How do?" Oh, oh, there's a lot of that stuff that I'm like, "Whoa!" I mean, I don't know how them folks in them Olympics look. We spend a lot of our life during the winter in a piro. Did you well, see these the four boys, man kayak? These boys are yeah. in something smaller, narrower than a piro, and they're paddling at a much higher rate and than they we are do. Moving, and that thing don't move on the last. I'm like, <laughs> On the last Dang, day, you have that boy chase a cripple. You own to something there. Mm. You get that boy right there now. <laughs> on the last day, they had like four man kayak, and they're all just yeah. like in unison. That boat was going fifty miles an hour, and, and it's this big. I mean, it's yeah. the most incredible thing I ain't ever. No, way too big getting that thing. I, I no, at there's it. no way. A seat yeah. bigger than well, you could you know you could straddle it like a horse. Now, yeah. I'd sink that'd it. That'd be too much drag. Well, no, but I'm just saying, you, that's the only way you wouldn't get in it. But the, you, ain't, you ain't thin enough. The Olympics is pretty cool to like watch well, all the obscure things that you don't well, ever. Well, especially. Like I, I've said it before. It's when somebody's that talented, they're fun to watch. Absolutely. Do what they do. Them boys, I watched the shotgun in two. <laughs> How was that? I didn't. Yeah, I didn't catch that. Well, we we won gold. Both oh, thank you. Male and female. United States of America. Men's and women. We're going to win the shotgun. Y'all me, can have ping pong. Americans can shoot, boys. Let me tell you something. I watched that. That that, was, that thing was moving so fast. The skeet. Oh, and they're shooting twelve gauges, and I'm like, <laughs> I don't even know. I mean, I, you couldn't even see it on TV. You just see pink dust. It was You're like, like that thing going through that ditch. Yeah, yeah. but faster. You no, way say, faster. You just now. say, pull boom. Yeah. And hope th- you hit it. <laughs> yeah, I think they just had a spot picked out in their mind, and this is when I need to pull the trigger right here. Because <laughs> ain't well, no way. Most of them, most of them, I, it's, yeah, they've done done it so much, it's automatic. It's unbelievable. What's amazing is your brain is doing that. Yeah. Choop, mm. choop, choop. And it's just pink dust. Pink <laughs> yeah, dust. Yeah. And I'm like, Yeah, they don't just they, they don't, don't miss. one pellet don't hit. It's a full pattern. Yeah. Mm. I watch the ping pongs. Yeah, ping pong. They hold that paddle weird. And they they, they hold that paddle weird. They can smash it too. Well, not only they that. Return it. Yes. Hey, That's hey, what I got. I said, hey, he hit look, it back. They can hit a curveball better than our pitchers can throw a baseball curve. Yeah. Mm. The ones that play ping pong. Oh, the ping pong. Oh yeah, they hit it, and it. That, that's why they miss it. And I watched yeah. that one guy playing beach volleyball <laughs> that served it, where he hit it like fifty feet up in the air. That was incredible. Well, them volleyball like, people are insane. The, them, he would just hit it like straight up with a bunch of spin on it. And I don't know how them it, boys were returning it, but it would just come. It was like a pitching wedge oh, going right no, over no, the net. No, no. So when it hit <laughs> stuff, it just go off to the side. Oh, man, Ace. that was incredible. Ace. Them volleyball folks are. Yeah, that's like, for real. Because We want a lot of gold in that, too. Because volleyball is something we can all play they had, in theory. Uh, I so when you class. see so when you see that you're like <laughs> yeah who I, we don't really play no not like that. okay mm-hmm. like they do they oh, had to okay. spray the sand down was 139 oh, yeah. degrees ain't that something that's crazy that's hot i don't and think they was could... walking on it like it was nothing oh yeah the and then they do the gym volleyball too and they hit that ball so hard you can't see it and then somebody just goes boop, and it's up in the air I'm and like, it ain't ever going straight either you watch them; they hit it on the corners of the ball, like putting spin on it. And I'm like, "Hey, you, yeah. you, you That's boys are playing do. a different game." I'm just yeah. hoping to make contact. And try not yeah. to decapitate myself in the net, because that's just about as high as I can get. I can get just high enough to really hurt myself yeah. on that net. And them boys are, but they're over looking over the net, like, "Take that." Yeah, it's now Olympic athletes are they're incredible. Yeah, they're, we watched. I heard a lot of people say, I ain't watching that. They're doing this. They, they, you know, all that political crap. But the person next to them didn't. 
Yeah. And look, their oh, folks yeah. couldn't even be there. They yeah. was there. And you know how stressful that was? Oh, the I pressures. can't even imagine. And not mm-hmm. having your family there. To celebrate something you worked your whole life. And, yeah. Yeah. and but not eating sweets for five years. <laughs> Can you imagine? Godwin found the Godwin found Godwin, the tough part. Or bread. Hey, hey, Godwin said, I can't do it. Anymore. Except for the shot putters. They ain't give up on that. I, I know yeah. to say. Did you How see did them they, boys throwing that shot put at the end? Oh, I did. They had t- they two Americans that? that just kept. He said it's like throwing a bowling ball from the free throw line and making it. But the other free throw line. Yeah. The That's other, crazy. like throwing it all the way across a basketball. I threw the shot put in high school, not very far. But th- them boys. What are they doing? Hey, the pro basketball hoisting. players can hit, hit it from oh. to net to we net. Won, we won that one, too. <laughs> net to yeah, we net. won that. We finally, the basketball team made me nervous for a minute <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah. Lost that one game. I said, what are y'all doing? Yeah, that was. This ain't the dream. That ain't my dream team. Uh, yeah, we had a pretty good. America had a pretty good Olympics. Well, was, what, oh, yeah. Do you think but I, that the the night when they when the athlete got the gold, that night, did they go out and just splurge on groceries? Just Probably eat not. anything they want? Probably not, because most of them was competing in something else, too. Yeah, yeah. You don't go yeah. over there with one thing in mind. Now, let's yeah. just say you was done. Done, done? Oh, oh yeah. Uh, yeah. You got done. three years now. They yeah. got pizza, didn't they? Oh. oh they get I pizza, hope Alice and Felix. Stay Alice and- rolls. Well, they were in Japan. I would oh, have just... I'd have went and ponied up to the biggest sushi bar You've they got seen. over there. And yeah, but sushi's not that bad for you. The amount I would have ate would have been. It is oh. when you deep fry. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, this um, is all you can eat. Yeah. Yeah. When we Martin go, it's not, it's that, all you can not eat, that healthy. Yeah, I would have uh, I'd have been on that rice bag <laughs> hard. I hope Allison Felix got her a pizza, though. Oh, yeah. 11 medals in her life mm-hmm. and two of these after having a baby. At 35. That's unbelievable. 35 years old. That's right. I don't think we hung out on the fact that she had a baby between these Olympics mm-hmm. long enough. 35. She had yeah. a baby. Yeah, I'm like Martin. 35. She's 35 I've never years had old. a baby, but if I did, that would be the end of me running anywhere. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. I've seen it happen three times. Hmm. But I, the fact that she, she, she then is the third fastest person in the world to run a lap around a track. Yeah. That's unbelievable. Crazy. The human body. Amazing. It can bounce back. Yeah. yeah. Just like me and Martin. Look, yeah. Listen to me breathing. <laughs> yeah, well, listen to that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you don't even need oxygen, do you? No, I hadn't had any yet. But that's the sound of, Stand by, sir. That's the sound of pea pneumonia leaving the lungs. Pea pneumonia. I, can't, right. I still can't spell it. Let's take our last break. We'll be back right after this. All right, boys. Let's do it. I got something to say before this yeah, is before all we take I'm off. Focus. Well, hey, how about you just take off, son? Yeah, start wherever you want to start. Well, hey, look, I don't know if you've here's what seen I have, whose face is on this podcast. Here's what I have it's for yours. the fans. Shh, shh. Hey, look, I've always told y'all, as far as it goes for you this morning when you get up, you need to put this in your mind. I'm going to be good to everybody that come in contact, and I'm going to do what's right. Now, here's the charge. All of y'all check the Bible and see how many times God talks about being good and being right and then not only that and then look at how how many rewards you get when you are that way that's the challenge for you folks okay i like it yeah i like it because you will be pleasantly surprised at how much is in there well and look i i just want to share this um while i was down not quite out but definitely down uh, a buddy of mine shared a um, a verse with me that helped get him through some tough times in his life. And if I said this verse one time to myself and out loud while I was while I was in a Down, bad spot, yep, yep. I said it five thousand. Um, and it is Psalms ninety one two. It says, "My God, you are my refuge." I trust in you, and I am safe. And when you're down and in a bad spot, that one right there, it helped get me through a lot of what I was going through. Because anytime my my breathing would kind of suck a little bit or, you know, I'd get a little panicky or anything like that, 
I could say that and it would immediately calm me down and get everything because it's like the cool thing about it too is like it's um it's the word I'm looking for. When you say well, it, it causes well and it causes you to like say it slowly and take good deep breaths too to say, My God, you are my refuge. I trust in you and I am safe. And man, for me personally over the past week that one that one meant a lot to me so clay thank you for sharing that with me during during what to this point has been arguably the lowest time of my life so you know there we go well i'll get emotional next i guess um, <laughs> go for it Jay. yeah uh so whew, yeah it was the worst two weeks of my life um i was down um <laughs> oh, you That's, good, you, right, here we go you good hammer uh me, but good. yeah no i was i was scared there was bad times there was good times I, I listened to a lot of worship music i've mentioned the song promises on this podcast before if you've never heard that one go listen to it for sure um but on sunday night uh, about 50 people were in my yard praying for me and that meant a lot and a lady named miss beth brought this big old pink sign right here you can probably barely see it um, but it says, I am Yahweh, your mighty God. I grip your right hand and won't let you go. I whisper to you, don't be afraid. I'm here to help you. Isaiah 41, 13. And we left that up in our house. It's still up in my house right now. Um, and yeah, I've, I've been through a few things in life that were scary, but I always felt like I had some sort of control. Mm-hmm. If it was my kid, I was still the one making decisions with Carter and all his health stuff. But for the first time probably ever, I had to fully trust God on me. Nothing I could do, nothing I could say. I'm not smart enough. I didn't, can't even pronounce it. I for sure can't spell anything they were giving me. Um, So it was just one of those, you know, it was a real coming to adulthood moment for me, even being as young as I am like this, this this uh, this for sure ain't it right here but it's it's scary whenever you're looking at it and saying am i gonna be all right and the only thing you can do is actually do what god asks you to do and just trust in him because that's all we got at the end of the day anyway so that being said all those people that prayed for me i I, i've there's a there's a list of hundreds i i got texts from all over the world from people and it meant so much and i'm so glad i was so wanting to be back in this chair just to laugh Mm -hmm. and hang out with you because if i and i gotta tell you si if this thing would have taken me out and not you and y'all would have made fun of me in heaven for like the first ten thousand, yeah i wouldn't have been able to handle that so i'll say this i kept pushing on just so i could sit next to you again sir through the whole thing here's here's what i will say humility is a heck of a thing oh yeah when you think you when you think like look i here's i'll give y'all my last thought process on this whole thing i did not get vaccinated my thought was i'm 35 i'm young i'm healthy my immune system has always performed flawlessly i want my body to have the first shot at this virus guess what I got my wish. (laughs) I got my wish. I realized in that moment how, in my opinion now, after researching and studying, how narrow-minded that wish was. Um, And look, for those of you that say it's not bad, it's this, it's that, it's the other, I want to remind you all something in this deal. My family up until me was 0-1 in the fight against COVID. It got my dad. So I knew how serious it was, but it still, that wasn't me. He was older. He was at risk. He was the, he was the kind that, that it should have gotten if it were going to get somebody. So it still didn't hit home to me until it hit me, a perfectly healthy 35 year old young male no underlying health conditions no nothing and it took me to the floor 
legit twice took me to the floor. (laughs) And so with that being said, that's why I said that humility is a heck of a thing. Well, that because it humbled me right there before God and made me realize in my life where I had gotten off track. That's one of the things I, I tell people all the time. If you don't have a strong relationship with your family, okay, with your mom and dad or with your siblings, okay, <clears throat> then especially when something, and like J.D. said it, okay, you have no control over what f- you're facing, okay? And what you're facing may take you out. Okay, and then the other part about that, the family is one thing, but then if you don't have a relationship with God Almighty, Mm -hmm. okay, when stuff like this hits, like I always used it when first time we did Make a Wish Foundation with kids that were stage four cancer, okay, they're on their way out, they're dying, and they come and wanted to see, meet Uncle Si. Okay, that's a bone to be chewed right there anyway. But we didn't know how to handle it. Mm -hmm. Okay? And the part about it is, okay, this is out of your control. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, there's nothing in and of yourself that you can do to make it better. You know, I always asked, okay, it's one thing for you to go to the doctor and tell you, like me, going to the doctor, and he said, okay, you've got stage four cancer. That wouldn't really bother me. But if I had to, when my kids were little, go and they tell me my child has stage four cancer, you know, folks, I'm telling you, life is too short, okay? And pandemic, this thing, COVID-19, is nothing to play with. That's why I say, okay, we Martin lost his dad to it for crying out loud. Okay, people have lost their mom, their dad, their siblings, okay, and it's killed over a million. I've had to covert myself, okay, it come close to taking me out. Okay, it's not, this is nothing to play with for crying out loud. Get serious about it. And and don't think, well, size old, because I ain't old. I'm 32 and I have a seven, a five, and a two-year-old. And I spent one week looking at birds in a hospital window, and that was my only company. So, hey, at least you had the birds. Yeah, I named hey, them. God, John the Baptist hey, was a cool hey, bird. God sent them. Yeah, yeah, that's who I talked to up there in room four eighty three, uh, boys. Uh, Godwin, you got anything before we get out of here? No, it's, I'm just glad we was praying for you. And uh... all right, let me. I'm gonna take us out with a verse. Oh, give us ahead. another one, baby. Okay. Hit us hard. I was talking about right and being good. Okay, let's see what I want to do here, boys. <laughs> He's in Proverbs He's 10, if you're turning yep, with yep. us. Yep, I'm in Proverbs 10. The wise in heart accepts command, but a chattering fool comes to ruin. The man in integrity walks securely, but he who takes control of uh, crooked path will be found out. He who winks maliciously causes grief, and a chattering fool comes to ruin. The mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life, but violence overwhelms the mouth of the wicked. Okay. Look, it adds life. Being right, the mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life. So just be good, do what's right, and God will add years to your life. That's what the good book says. Amen. I like that. All right, we'll see y'all next time right here in the duck call room. We're out. I'm going to be breathing even better next time. That's it, bro.